Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this whole tutorial series, I'm going to show you how to make a multiplayer first person shooter. It also includes, you know, things like weapon switching, a full state machine for the game rounds. You can see I even added inverse kinematics, so you can see that the arms move correctly and things like that. You can shoot each other and take damage, everything is synchronized. See, this is on my two screens, and I'm even going to show you how to easily connect and play with your friends over the network. We're doing much, much more than just that, so hopefully you enjoy it. It's all completely free, nothing is paid or anything. I'm using the Sinted Sinti Asset Kit uh, for the starter kit. I believe it's called an Asset Store, which is just free. This is both where I have the guns and the little models that you see around here, and the little testing areas just set up from that. Now, it's a bit of a mini course, so of course I'm not going to go in-depth with everything, but if there's something you really want me to do, let me know in the comments, and I might add that on top of the series. So essentially, I'm going to be building the game out uh, just along with you. So you're just going to be able to follow along and see my logic. I do not have this game already built out or pre-planned or anything. So I'm really just going to go with the flow and show you how to work with the networking system as well as just making the game mechanics. Now, a quick disclaimer, if you're new to Unity in general, I will recommend you going and get more familiar making single player games before you enter the realm of multiplayer, as multiplayer logic can be quite tricky. Now getting right into it, the first things first is we need to install the multiplayer system that we want to use and I'm going to be using Pernet as the networking system. So if you want an easy time following along, that's probably what you should do as well. Now there's many ways to do this, you can get Pernet off of the asset store and essentially on the docs with pernet.gitbook.io, at least that's the domain for now, you can see there's an installation and setup page where you can easily go to the asset store if you want. I'm just going to install it off of uh, GitHub here by just simply copying this link, going into Unity, opening up the package manager and going to say install package from git url. You just paste the url and press install. And it's really as easy as that. Now that this is done compiling, if you want to update in the future, it's as easy as just opening the package manager and hit update. Same thing goes, of course, if you got it on the asset store. Now that we have the networking solution in there, let's work on actually setting up the scene for networking, but also setting up our player. So just first things first, I just actually want to create the player before I do the networking, because I want to show you that I already have a single player, uh, player script in here that I'm of course providing you for free in the description. So if I just go and create an empty and I'm going to call this player, I'm just going to zero it in the world and let's give it a player body. So under it, I'm going to make a capsule and I'm just going to call this body. I'm going to offset this by one. So that way we have the root of the player at the very bottom of the capsule. This is how I liking it the best. And then the body, I'm just going to make it half width and half length. There we go. And essentially now, yeah, we have a little player body and I already have made a little material for him. So he just got this little checkout material. Now, another thing is also I'm going to drag and drop the player camera onto him. So you can see that now the camera is just positioned at the top of his head. You can position it wherever you want in relation to the player, but this is where I want it. And now it's time to add that player controller script, which I, of course, provide in the description. Now, adding the script, I'm just going to drag it to the top. First things first, it'll have automatically added a character controller. And I'm going to offset this by one to make sure that, you know, it aligns with our player. I'm also going to remove the capsule collider from our actual player body real quick, just so that doesn't end up messing with something. And of course, I'm going to make the radius match with the actual radius of the player's uh, capsule. And there we go. It should really be as easy as this. So now if I just press play, now we have a single player that can roam around. Oh, of course, I've got to target the camera. Just going to drag and drop the camera in here. And there we go. Now we should have a player that can move around. And yeah, things should just work fine. All right. So now that we have the player set up and we know that he works in single player, let's make the whole thing multiplayer. And the reason why I wanted to provide you the script is so it's easier for you to follow along. Of course, you can use your own player controller if you want, but I, of course, can't guarantee that it's going to be the exact same process. So first things first, just network in the scene is easy as ever. So I'm just going to make a new game object, call it network manager. And for just because I like it, I'm going to zero it. And we're going to add the network manager script to the this new object. And we're, of course, going to feed it with some rules. I'm going to go with the unsafe rules. And keep in mind that this game is not going to be like cheat proof or super high performance or whatever. This is really going to be a game that you can play for fun with your friends or you can release for free on Steam and, and so on and so forth. But I won't be looking into anti-cheating and stuff like that because that's a way bigger topic and I'm not interested in opening that Pandora's box. I'm just going to click, click new here on the network prefabs as well and it'll automatically have made itself inside my prefabs folder. Uh, and that's essentially it. Now we're ready to just, if I press start, you can see now we've started as a server, started as a client. However, the player is obviously not networked. So if I have another client join, it won't work. So now we need to actually network the player and spawn the player. So the first things first is let's go into the player controller script. And this is where the networking begins. So first of all, I'm going to make this a, whoops, a network behavior. And this is going to use the per net namespace, which has been added up here. And now one of the very first things that we have to do is in the unspawned, I'm just going to say enabled equals to is owner. 
So this means that if we are the owner, this whole object will be enabled. If we're not the owner, it won't be enabled. The reason why I do this is because everything happens in the update loop where we handle the movement and the update loop won't run if it's not enabled, which means if we're not the owner, it won't run the update loop, meaning that we can't control the player. So hopefully that makes sense and that should be easy enough. Now let's continue down this path a little bit. So as you notice, I put the camera on the player. I genuinely don't like doing this. We can, and we absolutely can do that. What we can just do is we can just say, if we're not the owner, we'll just destroy the camera. Oh, sorry. If we are not the owner, then we should destroy the camera. This is how it should look. Now let's just go test this real quick. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the player intro prefab. So I'm gonna do this by just dragging the player into the prefabs folder. And if we're gonna look at the network prefabs now as well, you should see that the player has been found in here. So this means that we can now remove him from the scene. And then on the network manager or wherever you want it, I can just add the player spawner component, which comes with Pernet. Gonna drag the player in there as the player prefab and let's give it some spawn points. So in my environment, I'm just gonna make a spawn points parent. I'm, I'm going to give that a few individual points. So I'm just going to call that point. I'm going to give them this little yellow diamond and I'm just going to put one here, put one over here, put one here and put one over here. Just quickly like that. And then inside here, I can just feed all of these to the spawn points of the player spawner. Like so. Right, so now when I hit play, because the network should automatically start, it should spawn us and it should spawn us as our player. And as you can see, it did just that. Now I can walk around and move around like so. And now let's test this. So let me start up again. And let me actually make sure I saved the scene properly. I did. So let's start this up again. And I already have a Peril Sync clone ready. So I'm just gonna press play on that and make sure that that all works. There we go. Now we have our player there, which is the other player that spawned. However, I forgot one very fundamental thing, which you might've noticed if you've followed Pernet before, which is that we need to add the network transform for us to actually be able to see them to move. And that should be as easy as that. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna try again. Now join. And I accidentally added it to the network manager. There we go. Now let's test. And there we go. Now we can see each other move around and rotate. As you can see, this is the other player. And this is us. And so this works perfectly fine. And cool. Now we have the player set up. However, just a little extra for this video. I really like to use Cinemachine in my project. So I'll prefer doing that instead. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go and take the camera here, put it back into the scene, just plop it up at the top. And we can place it somewhere nice if we want to, you know, show the map, for example, like that. But more importantly, we're going to remove it from the player and I'm going to import Cinemachine into the project. So this is a Unity asset. So if you go into Unity registry and search for Cinemachine, we can actually import the Cinemachine asset straight up. So now that this is imported, we can right click on our player in the prefab. We can go to Cinemachine and we can make a Cinemachine camera. And now this is the camera that's actually going to be moving around on the player. I'm just going to put it in about the same spot up here at the top, something like that. And this should now work as long as it takes priority. So for example, you can have it use priority, but more importantly, we can also just enable and disable it, which is what I'm gonna be doing. So essentially where we destroy it here is if we're not the owner, or actually rather if we are the owner, I think we should enable it. So here I'm gonna change camera to Cinemachine camera. Like so, this imports the unity.cinemachine namespace. And now here at uh, the player camera, we're gonna say that the enable state of this, so let's do player camera but game object that set active is equals to is owner. So now it'll only be active if we are the owner, it'll be inactive if we're not the owner. This way Cinemachine will only take control when we're the owner. So now going back here, I can also just enable it or disable it by default. So I'm gonna disable it by default. This way it won't accidentally you know, jump from one camera to another. And now if we go and press play. Oh, of course I forgot to set the reference. I'm just gonna drag and drop it in there. And then if we hit play, we can see now the camera still works perfectly fine as before. And if the other player joins, his camera should also work perfectly fine as before. Oh, and of course, mind you, on the scene, make sure you save the scene because the Cinemachine brain has been added to your camera. So I just need to do that, refresh, join, and there we go. Now the, it works with the Cinemachine camera instead is very nice and this is going to be good for a future as well because it gives us some more control over making things for example like if we want to make cinematics intros and so on we can get a lot more freedom doing that and i just like working with cinemachine i find it very clean so i hope this first video wasn't too messy we essentially got set up with some network players networked in the scene and we got the player spawning and now in the next upcoming videos we can go through a bunch of things like for example animating the player and synchronizing it and also rigging it to hold weapons we can do things like the state machine setup of the actual, you know, rounds and having a player, you know, spawning and respawning state and so on. We're going to be handling the shooting and the health and the UI and so on. So yeah, keep track of the following videos. And uh, yeah, I hope this was helpful. 
and uh, leave a like, comment and subscribe and have a wonderful day.